It is the fastest growing college at Kent State, the College of Aeronautics and Engineering. A big reason it's taking off, more students want to be pilots. In April, we told you a building expansion project was meeting both enrollment growth and demand in the aviation industry. Experts estimate the aviation industry is currently dealing with a shortage of 5,000 pilots. That's only expected to jump to 12,000 in two years and to 14,000 by 2030. So tonight, Bob Jones is following through. As students head back to classrooms, he spoke with future pilots, taking their dreams to new heights. Time, turn, throttle, trim, tune, yep. tires, talk. Kent State flight instructor James Wilson, teaching some of the finer points of flying. So he's uh, practicing learning how to fly in the clouds. As he guides student Anthony Parika because then the approach isn't stable, and then what do we do? James says the aeronautics program at Kent State has really grown in recent years. Yeah, there's a demand, and uh, people just have a big interest in flying. In the spring, News 5 first told you about the 44,000 square foot expansion to the aeronautics and engineering building, creating 80% more space. And now I'm following through as classes begin in the building, talking with students en route to becoming pilots. We have a great program here, so I really like gravitated towards it. Including Dylan Fusca. If you would have asked me like as a kid what I wanted to be when I grew up, I always would have said a superhero and like now I can fly. And Kelsey Bajanski, who recognizes the importance of women in aviation. As like women in the field, we're at like a 8%, which is really low, but um, I work with uh, women in aviation a lot, which is a club here at Kent. So we work to like encourage young women to like be in the engineering field, be in the airline field. It's really critical that the students learn the exact language that Christina Blobaum, the dean of the college, says the new space includes much more than classrooms and research labs. You'll also find air traffic control simulators in five rooms. It feels like airport. real life flying. It feels like real life. It feels like you're standing there looking out the windows of the tower. Blobaum says there is a huge demand for pilots and every other area of aviation in part because of an aging and retiring pilot workforce and with more people wanting to travel post pandemic. Overall, as a college, we have more students than we ever have across both engineering and aeronautics. So it is the largest class that this college has ever seen. And with aeronautics and engineering linked in many ways, both fields are taking off at KSU. So for instance, aerospace engineering, those are the folks who design the aircraft. So there's a huge demand for them. And for many of the students, there's no holding pattern as they work to get their pilot's licenses. Anything else you want to tell me about uh, when you expect to be up and flying and moving? And uh, I'll be flying in 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> in Kent, Bob Jones, <laughs> News 5. Always wanted to be a superhero, now I can fly. Lawmakers in D.C. are working on legislation to try to make it easier to fill those pilot jobs. A uh, bill passed by the House would raise the mandatory retirement age for airline pilots from 65 to 67. That's despite opposition from pilot groups. It also gives the FAA more money to hire air traffic controllers. Similar measure now being worked on in the Senate. They have until October 1st to pass something similar. More air traffic controllers? needed. A New York Times report found that close calls involving airlines may be more common than we ever thought, with only a fraction ever made public. One factor causing concern is that shortage of air traffic controllers. Also, more planes in the skies. The, the New York Times is looking at NASA databases that's bringing to light some of these incidents that haven't been publicly known. Most of them, if not all of them, have been factors involving human error. According to the Department of Transportation's Inspector General, 20 of 26 critical air traffic control facilities were staffed below the minimum threshold of 85 percent. The number of controllers down 10 percent in the last decade. 